So Man. Very, um... I think he was doing heroin. Must be fun for him to be out. Imagine, imagine that. You're a trillionaire, a legendary musician. You can't have a glass of wine out. Yeah, everybody's your parents. The He's big a deal. grown man. Yeah, I mean, the only time he, he hurt anyone was a tree. Yeah, it's he a only tree. hurt a tree. That's right. <laughs> and they claim he wasn't drinking. Yeah. All right. And wine ain't dumb. Uh, just, come on. What is wrong with Kate Winslet? She has just got married again. Yeah. She's... So. She's a, Already she's a, divorced from the first husband. Yeah. Her daughter with that husband is only two years old, now attending her next wedding. You'd think someone would get a hold of her and go, you know what, honey? Maybe you ought to just slow down on getting married. And Sam Mendes, what is he thinking when he marries her? You wonder. He's the uh, director of... What's American his name? Menzies? Mendes. Oh, Mendes. Not Menzies. Like Mindy Herman? <laughs> Sam Mindy? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they got married on a Caribbean island, didn't tell anyone. Uh, the mother says that she didn't find out until Kate got home and said, I'm married again. Uh, yeah, Debbie Schlussel, you're on the air. Hey, Howard. Hey. Howard, I think a million dogs named Spike got it to Spike Lee for defaming their name. I think the whole reason he's doing this lawsuit, think about it, he hasn't had a hit movie. The Knicks, uh, you know, basically basketball season was over for them a long time ago, so... He can't get pictures on page six of him ranting and raving courtside against the opposing team. And I think it's all about publicity for Of course. Lee. You're absolutely right, and it's pathetic. And the judge should throw it out. Yeah. The ju that's the problem. If the judge doesn't throw it out and entertains these ridiculous lawsuits, uh, there's no hope for anyone. The courts are crowded with, with nudniks like Spike Lee. Well, you know, Howard, I blame Hollywood for the fact that he's gotten to this point because if he were white... And he made racist movies and anti-Semitic movies with characters like he's made. He would never get away with it. And the one time that one movie critic called him out for being a racist, he told the guy to kiss my black A double S. And, uh, and then he put something about it in his next movie at the beginning. And you know how he names all his movies a Spike Lee joint? And then he has to act in every one of his movies. He's not just... Uh, uh, satisfied with directing behind the scenes, the guy is the ultimate in hubris. Well, you've spoken truth again, and uh, you know Beatrice Arthur is suing NBC and CBS because her name is B. <laughs> B. Arthur. All right, thank you, Debbie. And once again, we have. I know that the the Penthouse Club is trying to get publicity for itself because they just opened a strip club. But they, you know, they start naming the people who are there. Well, let me tell you something. I am so opposed to that. You know, a man goes into a strip club. He should. It's just like Billy Joe should be able to drink wine and not be reported on the newspaper. A man goes into a strip club. I don't care if he's famous or just a regular guy on the street. You don't. There's a code. You don't tell. The club isn't supposed to announce the, a famous person for going to a strip club. It's supposed to be like one of those golf clubs. Once you go in, everything stays in there. That's a man, baby. But do you realize that at that penthouse club, they have a $600 an hour VIP room? What goes on in there? I have no clue. What do you get for the $600? I better get laid. <laughs> $600. That better not be more than a table dance. <laughs> VIP room? Uh, of course I'm VIP. I paid $600 an hour. To Someone be better be naked with their legs spread. Wow. 600 bucks. Yeah, I don't understand that. Maybe we have to do an investigation. That was all from Russian Malloy today. 600 bucks, I'll move in for a month and live there. <laughs> That's rent. <laughs> That's rent. <laughs> uh, I told you that over the weekend, a little nine-year-old girl was um, kidnapped and taken right. away for a couple of days and then left at a convenience store where she called her family and then was reunited with them. Well, they now say they've caught the man who they think was the kidnapper with the help of the little girl and a surveillance tape that was uh, made by a neighbor's surveillance camera. And oh, uh, great. they do say, however, that the girl was sexually molested. There's evidence that she was molested during that two-day stay with this awful human being so she's back at home with her family and he is under arrest and he fought furiously with the cops and a, one of the police dogs bit him so good yeah the police dog finally attacked him hey eric you're on the air hey what's going on howard what's up i wanted to tell you uh 
I, I thought last night the E-Show was awesome. Oh, yeah. And by the way, tonight at 11 o'clock is the second half of that shaved or unshaved shaved game. Or unshaved. Are the chicks going to be as hot as last night? Yes, but... please uh, tune in for that. Can I ask Gary something? Sure. How come when uh, the, one of the last girls, he said, oh, is she Italian? And I think she said yes. And then he automatically assumed that she was going to have like a full jungle down there. <laughs> Gary is the one uh, who is Italian. He's a self-hating Italian. He, he keeps going around saying Italian girls are hairy. Is it true? No. I mean, there's some Italian girls that are hairy, just like there's some Jewish chicks who are hairy, and there's some, you know. Some of everybody is hairy. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of chicks running around with hair. Right, like I've noticed some Italian girls like have hairy arms. He's he's just he's self-hating, that's all. Right, right. He's not a real Italian like you and me. Thank right. you. Listen, I, I had an idea for another contest. You know how you had the butterface? Yeah. How about, like, the butter butt or the butter breast? No. Doesn't no? work. Thank you. You keep your day job. Yeah, you let me handle all the butterface contests. All right. I just thought it might be a good idea. Tell you what. You've won a three-day, two-night trip for two to Los Angeles and VIP access to the Highlands nightclub for a star-studded Hollywood party. Are you serious? I'm serious. You're the best, Howard. I'll tell you who gave us that. Uh, our friends at E! Entertainment's new summer lineup, including Famous 2 and Celebrity Uncensored. I've seen Celebrity Uncensored. It's funny as hell. I saw it, too. It's great. It's great. It's, uh, I couldn't take my eyes off. It's all famous people coming out of clubs, like, drunk and stuff and fighting with photographers. Right. And It's good. It's a good show. At the show. moment, they don't want you to see them. All right. So hold the line, okay? Thank you very much, Howard. All right. Yes, Chauncey. Hey, Howard. How's it going? Hey. I know you're a scores man, and you're always going to be a scores man. Always. I have nothing to gain by saying this, but diversity is sometimes good for the soul. I have never seen a strip club like the Penthouse Executive Club in my life. It is, it is the Disneyland of strip clubs. All right. Well, what do you I, do in a six hundred dollar an hour VIP room? Yeah, well, I mean, who wants to pay six? I mean, I, I'm not against penthouse strip club. I'm all for strip clubs. I go to them, but the scores to me is the mecca. I, I understand that, but Howard, you got to at least check it out. You know what they have? They have these rooms. You no, know no scores has the Presidents Club. Yeah. Well, picture seven Presidents Clubs, and each one is designed differently. It's so plush and makes you feel. You have to see it. It's amazing. Well, 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 let me understand something. Are you on the payroll? I'm not. I'm not the game. You nothing. went into a, a private room alone with a chick for six hundred bucks. If you want, or you can have a couple of girls in the room. And six hundred dollars. Yeah. That seems exorbitant. What do you think a guy pays at, at scores for the President's Club? It's a lot more than that. No. It's Coward, you get it. Come. No, know. I'm not talking about that. I got friends who go to scores and and they go into the champagne room. No, I'm not talking about the champagne room. I'm talking about the President's Club. There's a difference. I don't even know. The, I don't even know what the, the, there's a president's club. One or the other. You don't yeah, know. Well, they, see, there's a big difference, of course. The champagne room, anybody can, can go into. Are you the chicks, but expensive. are the chicks as good looking as the scores chicks? Just as good. Just as good. They're, it's well, not they're not in the magazine. It's, it, listen, I don't have any problem with any strip club. I'm all for it. Strip clubs are very important to a man. Any real man always likes to relax at a strip club. Yeah, why not? Not any real man. Any real man. If you want to. I don't know. <laughs> I'm suspicious of a guy who doesn't go to strip clubs. <laughs> well, in uh, in Russia Malloy, they're talking about how e Ethan Hawke was in the penthouse place it's at 3 o'clock in the morning. But you know what this does remind me of? When a new airline comes out, they all, you know, they give you all the bells and whistles. And then when, when they get all your business. Where they get their name up there. Hmm. That's why I don't abandon scores. They've been consistently good for years. I agree. I totally agree. But just, so I'm a scores guy. Well, you oh, got to go over and check it yeah, out. Yeah, you Chances have to go to the same place. If you I don't it, need it. I got scores. I'm just saying, maybe you need to know. I don't need to know, that. You eat the same restaurant every single night? No. That's right. So why would you go to the same strip club every because, night? Because there's so few strip clubs that are good in New York. That's what I'm saying. That's so listen to me. Point. I'll tell you why. Then you go over to the new one. Oh, yeah, okay. The first couple of weeks, they give you all the good chicks and all that stuff. And five years from now, when there's no more scores, you go, man, scores was consistent. So I support scores. So you think it'll run scores out of business? So I don't want to see that happen. If you start running around. That's right. Oh, I see. So you don't want to lose. You don't want to scores go out of business. So That's right. To... Got to stick with your club. Not like these dance clubs where you no, wait, keep right. plenty, one's hot plenty. for two Yeah, minutes. but you're like a trendy guy. You go to this club. You go to that club. I stick with what's good. There's plenty to go around. When I out. find something good, I stick with it. I think you're missing out. Well, hey, fine. Let me miss out. If that's missing out, I don't want to. I don't. I don't care. 
Man. If that's wrong, I don't want to be right. right. <laughs> I would love to hear your reaction if you poked your head into this place. Whatever. All You'll right, never Howard. hear that. Thank you, Chauncey. Take care. Bye. All right, bye. Uh, Luther Vandross woke up. I forgot to tell you. Oh, that happened a few it's about weeks time that guy woke up. Ago. Yeah, yeah. That uh, lazy, the last ba- I heard <laughs> lazy bastard laying in bed like Get that. Up. Get up and sing. How's he doing? The last I heard, I don't have a recent update on his medical history, but he had awakened and uh, still couldn't talk because he still had the tube in his throat. Mm-hmm. But uh, he was awake. I'm sure if he could talk, he'd say, could you get this tube out of my throat? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you figure he's trying to say? Yeah. Um, Reuben and Clay. Now, I don't know why this is happening this time around with American Idol. Both of them have a single being released at the same time. Well, the reason this is happening is there was no clear winner. Last time, everybody rooted for Kelly Clarkson. She was the clear winner. All right, but I'm just saying, there was always a winner and a runner-up. Right. They never put both records out at the same time. That's right. They're doing this, and it's wrong. The winner should be treated like a winner. That's right. They're not allowing Ruben Stutter to be the American Idol. There's, in essence, two American Idols. And I'm against it. <laughs> You're opposed to this? I'm opposed Are to it. Are you taking it to your union? No, I'm just opposed <laughs> to it. I'm just saying it to my friends here on the radio. Well, they've already started pre-selling them on Amazon.com, and I had mentioned this once before. Clay is number one right. on Amazon.com for the pre-orders of his single, while Ruben is number nine. All right. Well, there Each you go. single will uh, have two songs. One will be an original the other will be a cover of a song you know. Clay chose Paul Simon's Bridge Over Troubled Waters as his <laughs> a song you know. That's important. <laughs> we got to get a hold of these songs. I know. I can't wait. They come yeah. out uh, when? Uh, today. So Good. we can get them now. Well, I'll get those for tomorrow. All right. All so, right. So. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after these words. Howard Stern, the bad boy of that. I don't think you can afford Blaze. Just give me 10% of that action. <laughs> I believe you would have the biggest selling porn of all time. Feeding Pam and Tommy Lee. Yes, I do. (laughs) You could do a love set with Mr. X. I didn't tell you about my dream the other day. Maybe I'll wait and tell you later. Was it about me? No. I don't want to hear it. It was about Pam and Tommy Lee. I don't care about that. <laughs> Talk about me and I'm there. <laughs> Robin, uh, what else is in the news? You know, I know you don't know uh, Art Cooper, but he was the editor of GQ magazine. Yes. And the reason I bring it up is because he is dead at the age of 65. He retired on June 1st. <laughs> don't wait too long. And already he's dead. Yeah. A lot of guys, they retire and they just die. Yeah, he had a stroke almost a day after he retired. And he was doing what he loved best. They say he was known for hoisting vodka martinis in the corner at uh, the Four Seasons restaurant. And that's what he was doing when he was stricken. Wow. Lucky. Oh, just uh, just amazing. You know, he had a great career and uh, was well-liked in his industry. But, you know, you read sometimes about guys who, you know, perfectly fine until they retire, and then, boom, they're gone. He'll have a very tasteful pinstripe casket. Yes, he will. (laughs) How did you know? Mm. Also, um, this is great. A Texas man who won a $5.5 million uh, jackpot in the state lottery has been ordered to give it up because he bought the winning ticket with money he made selling cocaine. Oh, they can't do that. (laughs) They can't take that away from him. That's what they're saying. Oh, come on. He cannot have the winnings. Well, he'll have to stay in crime. He could have bought himself out of crime. Now now he's going to have to go back to dealing coke. That's right. Oh, man. That's bogus. what Beth is doing. I know you said she lost all the photos somehow from her photo shoot for a new calendar. Yeah, well. Is she doing anything about it? Yeah, she's trying to, but it's not going well. Well, let me tell you something. A guy who was just here on vacation, this British businessman, who took his pictures to a supermarket chain, sued the supermarket chain and Kodak for $8,000. Because they lost his pictures. Because they lost his vacation pictures. You know, I get that. And they just settled and gave him that exact amount. 
I'll never forget. I went cross country one year and I brought my pictures to a photo mat. These were all my pictures of my friends and, you know, this wonderful trip I was on. And they lost them. And, and, and you know, it may, I remember being devastated. They said, we're going to give you a free roll of film. And I went, well, what, the, what good is that? Those good? are all my memories. I, I spent an entire summer cataloging everything that went on and now I don't have it. Give you a free roll of film. That's right. You can't, you don't take that sitting down. You'd be like that guy. Huh. Sue him for $8,000 and get the money. You realize I had a picture of Jimmy Hoffa holding the Lindbergh baby? <laughs> now <laughs> that's that was priceless. Worth, right. <laughs> but Beth has an actual value she yeah. can put to those pictures. She should uh, yeah. be doing something. Well, she is, I think. All right. And Barbara Walters did her Hillary Clinton interview on Sunday. It did beat 60 Minutes. They say that 13 million people watched Barbara and Hillary sit down and have a chat. However, that pales in comparison to how many people wanted to see Barbara talk to Monica Lewinsky. They say 48 million people watched that interview. So Hillary's not such a big draw. Isn't it amazing every time they show that tape of Bill Clinton going, I did not have sex with that woman. He looks right in the camera and he points that finger and he's so angry. And he looks honest. He looks truthful. Yeah. He's a good liar. It really is nuts. I, that's what drove me crazy when I sort of ran into him backstage and he wouldn't look at me. Right. That drove me nuts. I mean, he thinks the he's better of than him. me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, you know what? I, I don't want a picture with you. You know, it's like, I can't be seen with you. Dude, I don't know that I want to be seen with you. <laughs> quite frankly, you lie. I mean, you look You're the, beneath me. I mean, I understand it. Nobody wants to admit they had sex with some chick when they're married, but. How know. do you do it so honestly and forthrightly to the <sighs> entire country? And why Hillary is bringing this back up? They say it's for the money. I can't believe anybody's that desperate. But you know what's really funny? She wrote it. She talked to Barbara about it. And then she keeps saying now that uh, I'm going to maintain my uh, privacy, <laughs> my right to privacy. Oh. So I, you know, yesterday they asked her, it's in the paper, that she never cheated on him. She says, I shouldn't have even answered that question after she answers the question. Right. And says, you know, we have this need for privacy and i'm going to maintain mine if, well you if, put it all in a book yeah i mean don't say you want privacy you can't have it both ways and that's what she's trying to do yeah because even when she was talking to barbara there was certain, i'm not going to really answer that question because i'm going to maintain my standard that i don't talk about my daughter in public huh. but she wrote about her right uh the guy who's um playing is the bachelor in that love for money or love or money yeah, i forgot show. to talk about that today yeah he was uh, thrown out of the military. <laughs> I knew there was something wrong with this guy. He's a good-looking guy. Looks like JFK Jr. Yes. He's got a great job, but I saw him on this show, uh, For Love or Money. I watched the show. I like it. And he Damn. was thrown out because he groped the breasts of a Navy officer while in a drunken stupor. Which ruins the whole show now. Because, you know, he's, it, that's just totally perverted. Yeah. To grab some woman's breasts when well, she doesn't want it. Have you seen this week's episode? No. It seems perfectly reasonable that this is the kind of thing he's up to. Uh -huh. Watch to last night's episode. Okay. And you'll see the guy who got thrown out of the, the Navy. I can't wait to go home. <laughs> I have so much to watch. Yeah. I got to watch this. I got to watch the rest of the recruit. I'm going to be so busy. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I, after I read that this morning, I said, oh, well, that was the guy I was watching on TV last night. Hmm. Up in Westchester, they caught a guy who has been harassing children by phone. Wow. Yeah, usually you expect the harassing phone calls that come from the kids. This guy would call numbers randomly until he got a young voice, and then he would tell them that he could see them. He was looking at them through a window or something. And then he would uh, coerce them into doing things like disrobing and touching themselves while he stayed on the phone. Uh, so, and How does he do that? He would threaten them and say something's oh. going to happen to your parents if you don't do this. Or I would have been like, good, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> called the right household. I remember I was naked in my room once and I got a call from a guy and he goes, I'm going to do something to your parents if you don't stand in front of the window with your penis exposed. And I went, I don't care what you do. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I'm not showing you anything. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, I'll call you bluff. Oh, dear. And it, they, he would warn the victim... If I go to jail, I'll know it's you as well. He would uh, make them so afraid. So uh, a lot of the kids helped the police. And they say he was actually in the process of making one of these phone calls when they burst in, in on him and caught him. Was he nude? 
Uh, I don't know. I don't know what state he was in at the time. I remember when I was like 12, this guy called me, wanted me to stand in front of the window naked, and I did it. Uh-huh. And the guy hung up. <laughs> I never understood why. <laughs> you know, we've been complaining about the Tony Awards, but at least one person liked them. Liz Smith. She well, said, yeah. If it Figures. wasn't the best damn Tony Award show ever, it came close. This Hello, theater annual is low rated across the country, but Sunday night it sparkled, dazzled, flew on wings, and made me want to go back to see everything I've seen all over again Holy. and to catch the few things I missed. Holy. There's something about Broadway. I think you got to be gay to really get into it. <laughs> yeah, we missed it completely. <laughs> yeah. It was wasted on us. <laughs> <laughs> Did I tell you about the kid who, you know, there's so many crazy things going on. A kid walk, came home at lunchtime yesterday and found his family dead. Yeah, I saw that. They were all slaughtered. Yeah, his mother was shot. His aunt was shot. Wow. He ran out before he realized his father was in there, too. He was hmm. screaming, where's my dad? Where's my dad? And he ran to a neighbor. They helped him call 911. And the police came over and found everybody dead. His sister was at daycare, and he was at mm. school at the time these murders occurred, and they think it might have had something to do with drugs because a few weeks ago, one of the cars that was driven by one of the members of the household was found with a bunch of marijuana inside. So it happens. Just a sad story for him. And then a guy who was just diagnosed with throat cancer yeah. went crazy, decided he was going to take somebody with him, and shot the people at the bar he normally goes to. Had a good time. That's unbelievable. He just, he couldn't take that. He, they were telling him he was going to lose his voice. And he just started he drinking, out. went crazy, started screaming about how miserable he was about the whole thing, and then shot the woman almost at point blank range and shot her wow. husband. He's going to live probably. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, so, yeah, he decided he wanted to take some people with him. That's why I drink at home. That's <laughs> a good idea. Yeah. And Martha Stewart showed up um, without yeah. fanfare to get her mug shots done yesterday. They snuck her into the FBI. Sort of worked out a deal where they would uh, not make her come in through front doors and confront the press once again. Was she and topless? No. <laughs> she didn't get an anus check like everyone else? <laughs> Congratulations to the New Jersey Devils. We haven't oh, yeah, mentioned no. yeah. that Jersey. they are the holders <laughs> once again you know how, of the Stanley Cup. Do you know how unpopular hockey is in this country that <laughs> they, they say that the first game of the playoffs, 1.7 million people tuned in. Yeah. And to give you a comparison, on ESPN, women's softball, 1.6 million people you're watched that. You're kidding. Yeah. So That's sad. That is sad. Women's softball did so almost as well. So you're telling me a network television right. show got the same ratings as a cable show. That's what I'm telling you. Wow. That's what I'm telling you. Come here. Come on over here <laughs> and get topless and bottomless. Yeah. Well, here's the radio call of the Devils winning the Stanley Cup last night. C5. I think you lost more weight. What do you think of that? I was looking you over during the uh, Melissa Gilbert interview. <laughs> And you were taking the pictures of us? Yes. I always get embarrassed when Melissa Gilbert says, Hey, Robin, take some pictures of me and Howard. What? What do you What do you? Why care? should you take the pictures? I was right there. She mm. didn't ask. It was the other woman. No, no, no. And I, don't I was like perfectly it. happy to do it. All right. See if I could work a camera. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, great job. I can't, see? That's why you shouldn't ask. Yeah, and do me a favor. Whenever you do that, just move the camera around a lot so the picture doesn't come out. I hate the way I look. Oh, stop. All so right, here's the but... radio call, C5. Everybody on their feet cheering the Devils. Ten seconds to go. They count it down. The Devils raising their arms. Hey, okay, Dad, can I have another hot dog? <laughs> They've got the puck. The Devils win the Stanley Cup. The New Jersey Devils are the Stanley Cup champions. And no one cares. Yeah, Jersey. Cut out the Anaheim Mighty Ducks. Three to nothing. Uh, oh, come on, wake up. <laughs> Do you realize that the the MVP was on the losing team? Uh, yes. It's a bunch of crap. It should have been Mr. Martin Brodeur. 
Martin, isn't his name? Whatever. <laughs> well, here's Martin Brodeur, who says he and the Devils uh, want more. They uh, This is not enough. C2. Right now, I don't think it's the time to call ourselves a dynasty. It's it's when whenever we're going to start slumping or not making the playoffs, but right now it doesn't look like anytime soon that's going to happen for us. You know, put on shorts and learn to play basketball. <laughs> so somebody will watch you. Right. And here's the uh, most valuable player, Jean-Sebastien Jaguer. I'd give that one up to get the other one. You know, it would have been much better to uh, to, to get the other one. Saying that, you know, I got to give credit to my teammates. Uh, they worked really oh, hard in front of me. They, no wonder uh, nobody's watching. They gave- <laughs> all right. Well, anything all else? All these guys are from somewhere else. You're right. They're all from France. Who in this country wants to see that? Right. French names. <laughs> and Harrison Ford has a movie opening on Friday. Here is Mr. Ford to say he actually likes some rap music. A1. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love it. I, I don't know much about it. There are a couple of rap uh, artists that I really Oh, do. come on, dude. <laughs> He's so boring. Like, uh, uh, every once in a while, I'm surprised by the complexity. Imagine if you talk like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know he can talk in a little more excited way. You yeah, think Callista Flockhart gets this guy, or there's a more animated guy? I don't know. Those two. There must be some exciting... <laughs> That's a reality show. <laughs> I don't think she even gets this guy, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's just like, ooh. Uh, uh, uh. I wanted to know if he's going to name some actual uh, rap groups. Well, well, it's too late, huh? Yeah. Of, the, of the wordsmithing and the, and the intelligence of, uh, of a rap song or the power of a, yeah, the sing one. Power of a rap song. I hate song. rap music for the most part, i got to say. Oh, come on. You like a uh, few things. Like, I like 50 Cent, but when I saw him on the um, MTV Movie Awards, I just fast-forwarded. I just couldn't take it. It's not good live. It really doesn't play well. No, I, I saw him uh, performing on Saturday Night Live, and I thought it was not good. Yeah. I don't go to the concerts. It's like but... a guy yelling into a microphone. I'm sorry. I guess it's and a generational it's thing. a bunch of guys running around yelling into microphones. Yeah. I don't even know why. I got to admit, I'm, <laughs> I'm out of the demo. I'm just not getting it. I'm not getting it. Some goddamn music. I don't even care. Them. I like Eminem, but I don't care to see yeah. him perform. I know. I went to the Eminem concert. I had it's a good time. Funny. But it's, it's uh, not fun. I want to see guys playing guitars and singing. Yeah, I don't know. not just holding a microphone. Somehow it seems like a little too close to what I could actually do. <laughs> <laughs> right. And uh, here's Rob Campos, who is the guy, the bachelor on For Love or Money. He was asked if there's a certain type of woman he's attracted to before. And when they get drunk, passes out, lets me squeeze her breasts. <laughs> I don't think I really have a type. You know, they asked me that when I decided to do the show. You know, Rob, do you have a type? And and I don't think I really do. It's kind of... and I think Yeah, I, I like a woman with a penis. <laughs> it's borne out in the show, you know, based on some of the choices I make. Oh, and even, you know, the last... This guy's a piece of work. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And why is it difficult for him to reject the women? This guy's oh, such God. a good-looking guy, and the whole time we were watching Love or Money or whatever it's called, I kept saying to my girlfriend, something wrong with this guy. I was just saying it because uh-huh. he's to, too good looking. Yeah, exactly. I go, there's something wrong with him. Something wrong with him. And then when this came out, I emailed it right away. I forwarded. Did you? I said, look at this. I told you there's something wrong with that well, freak. Well, I did think he was too good to be true. Remember the first week? I said, where did they find a guy like that? <laughs> they find him in jail. <laughs> so there we have the uh, bottom line on that one, and that's what's happening. He says he was given an honorable discharge and stuff from the military. Yeah, they dismissed him early, oh. but, you know, sometimes they do that just to avoid, you know, if you give a guy a dishonorable discharge, he tries to fight uh-huh. it sometimes. And, you know, maybe if he sticks around, he's going to get into more trouble. So sometimes you just say, you know, he's only got a couple of months left. Let's just get him All out right. of here. I hear you. All right, hey, listen, we'll see you tomorrow.